studio today is Lisa Charlie Boy. She is an Aboriginal blogger who is dedicated to inspiring and empowering other young Aboriginal people. Her popular blog, Urban Native Girl, covers everything from fashion to film, beauty, pop culture, to all things Indigenous. Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner and this is Extraordinary Women TV. Now you'll meet Lisa in a moment later in the interview. Before we take a break, I'll have my regular good to know minute when I ask my guests for their top success tip. And you'll hear Lisa's. Well, Lisa Charlie, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's so nice having you here. Now your blog is quite popular. Um, tell me about it. Well, I started the blog about five years ago when I was in York University for professional writing and was not having enough time to pitch for freelance work, so I decided I wanted to keep writing and decided to start a blog. And so a blog, well, of course, a lot of uh, writers are turning to, to blogs. We can blog for free. Um, but this came from a deeper place within you. Well, I wanted to explore all of the different topics that I was interested in, and that was certainly about Native culture and Indigenous culture, as well as fashion and beauty and lifestyle. And you've been interested in, uh, in beauty for, uh, and fashion for a very long time. When you were 10 years old, you picked up a magazine that, in a way, put you on your path. Absolutely. I loved fashion magazines since I was very young, since about 10 years old. I was reading Vogue and just about any kind of magazine I could get my hands on and sort of dreaming of the beautiful world that I saw inside those pages. When people come to your blog, what do they experience? It's pop culture with an indigenous twist. So it's about fashion, it's about film, it's about theater and arts, and it all has an indigenous twist. So I like to feature native actors and musicians and fashion designers and people of an indigenous background that are doing really wonderful and unique things. So can you give us an example of uh, some people that you write about and feature in your blog? Certainly. Well, Shosho Esquire is one of my favorite fashion designers and she's from BC and she does a lot of uh, work with uh, Pendleton fabric. So that's a uh, really up and coming uh, fashion designer. We also have Derek Miller who is Mohawk and he is a musician and a rocker and he's amazing with the guitar and he's from Six Nations right near Toronto and so I write about his work frequently and what he's doing is he's inspiring a lot of young people out there interested in getting in music. Now, do we have in Canada, um, is there enough sort of uh, representation uh, in the media for people that, um, uh, from our Aboriginal people? Absolutely not, and that's certainly one of the things about the blog that I really try to put enough role models that are available in the community and profile them because the mainstream media isn't isn't covering those people and what they're doing in the community and the kind of work that they're creating and I really like to celebrate their successes and so the youth can see them and know that they're able to become fashion designers if they want to or they can become musicians or they can become actors and and know that they have all those opportunities available to them. Tell us a little bit about your roots and, and your, your upbringing. You grew up in BC. Yes, um, I was born in Williams Lake, which is the interior of British Columbia in a really small town and my father was a chief and uh, my mother is, is American and I grew up in the suburbs actually of Vancouver and so I was, grew up actually separate from my native culture. My father passed when I was really young, so I grew up with my mother and a stepfather who was Dutch. So I grew up very separate from my family, my native family and my native roots. So it, was, uh, it wasn't until university that I really started to explore my native heritage and culture. Do you feel that you need more support um, as, a, as a blogger, as a writer, talking about native issues? I do feel that there is 
quite a bit of support, especially from the community, and I hear a lot from my audience and people that read um, what I'm writing and, and read the blog quite often. So there's a lot of community support, and of course I always want more support, that's a great thing, but in terms of having a niche sort of uh, blog, it's, um, it's not as widely acceptable as having a fashion blog or something that would just be strictly sort of mainstream. So niche is always a, a more targeted audience and a different way to go about things, but I've been enjoying the ride. What are some of your readers saying to you? I have Aboriginal youth, women, females that are writing to me and they say that they're really excited to see the kind of topics that, that I'm covering and they're excited about the people that I'm featuring and they can see a reflection of themselves and that um, they find me inspiring and they find a lot of the kind of things that I cover really exciting and interesting for them. Uh, what's your dream going forward? I'm looking to transition the blog into an online magazine, so I'll be creating an online magazine. Congratulations, soon. that's yeah, exciting. Yeah, thank you. And again, does the same focus then on um, on on Aboriginal issues? Absolutely, and arts and entertainment, mm -hmm. lifestyle, pop culture with an Indigenous twist. Love it. Who is your biggest influence uh, in your life right now? I would say that it's actually not one person. I would say mm -hmm. it's a collective and it's the Native community. It's a really beautiful community and it's so strong and there are so many amazing people that um, inspire me and encourage me and it's really the collective of the Native community that really inspires me to do more and to be more and to keep dreaming and keep striving and keep continuing um, to do what I'm doing. Um, do you feel, Lisa, that that uh, young girls here in Canada need more um, young girls from from the Aboriginal or Indigenous um, community need more role models? Absolutely, there is certainly a lot of great women in the Native community doing a lot of things all over Canada and the U.S., what we call Turtle Island, and um, they're not necessarily getting the mainstream media attention that they deserve, and so the young women that are in these communities, they might be in remote and rural communities, and they might ne not necessarily know who these women are and what they're doing and, and what the really strong women in the Indigenous communities are doing. So so it's definitely important to not only have an increase of role models, but also that mainstream media is covering them and there's more coverage so that they're able to know who's out there, what they're doing, what they're capable of. So do you think that your love for fashion, that one day you would like to actually create a, your own line? I would love to, yeah. actually. It's definitely in the works for further down the road. It's something that I've had a huge passion for and a desire to do for many years. Now, for you, um, what would you say your definition of success is? I think doing something that makes you feel alive and feel full of passion. So I'm really all about passion, so I have definitely had a passion for fashion, as cheesy as that sounds, for many years, so I've sort of become um, entrenched in the industry in many different ways and different capacities and and I think that you know to be successful you need to have a life full of passion and constantly be chasing that. So your writing have you do you find it um, therapeutic and, and healing? Writing has been a really great way for me to explore, like I said before, my indigenous uh, culture and heritage and background. So it's really led me to, to learn a lot and to explore a lot of different ideas. And I've recently started writing fiction and that has been something that has transformed me in a new way and sort of ignited a new passion. And definitely it's a way to, um, to heal. I know you do some work with uh, some not-for-profit groups. Yes. I've been working with the Aboriginal Professionals Association of Canada for the last few years now. And they are a group that was started by Gabrielle Scrimshaw, uh, founded by her. And it was a group to 
bridge the gap to tra for Aboriginals that are coming to Toronto and they're professionals and they're looking for people from the same cultural group and background to connect with and network with and, um, and be a support for. Do you feel that, um, what's been the greatest challenge for you in, in, in growing this? blog, getting it off the ground and growing it and, and you know, striving to make a difference in, in the lives of others. What's been the greatest challenge for you? The greatest challenge was starting the blog, actually, because I, when I started, I didn't know that anybody would be even interested in reading it. I had no idea that there would be so many people that wanted to uh, read what I had to say. So it was really just getting the confidence that I'm going to write about Indigenous issues and I'm going to write about fashion and I'm going to put it all in one blog and people can decide to read it or not. And so it was really just getting the confidence to mix two topics that seemingly have nothing to do with each other and, and make it happen. So what other projects are you involved in? Anything else um, keeping you busy these days? Yeah, so well, I'm working on a on editing a book right now for Aboriginal youth, and it's a textbook going into high schools, which is really exciting. So we're going to be having Aboriginal role models uh, writing in the book and have Aboriginal youth writing in the book as well and talking about their experiences. And so it's a way for Indigenous and non-Indigenous high school students to be able to look at what it's like for an Aboriginal youth today living in Canada. So they'll be writing about experiences from stereotypes, maybe racism, or maybe just talking about fry bread and a really enjoyable time that they have with their grandparents. Would you consider yourself spiritual? Yes. So to what extent does your spirituality play in, in your writing? Mm -hmm. I actually come from a, a Christian background, so I was raised very Christian, and it's been in the last eight years that I've been able to explore sort of more of Native spirituality and a way of life. So I would say that it affects my daily living more than it would be affecting my writing per se. So if there's one thing that um, you would love um my viewers to take away from this interview today, what would it be? It would be to realize that Native people in Canada are your neighbors and we are your friends and that we are, we are here and we're living and we're educated and just uh, wanting to participate in Canadian society as much as anyone else. Alisa, we're, we're going to take a break and that means it's my good to know minute and I know that you've got a great success tip. So yes, jump in there. Absolutely. To dream big and follow your passions and figure out what, what you're great at and continue to do that. And if you fail, just to get up, dust yourself off and keep going on. And that's good to know and thanks for that. Well, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, more on Extraordinary Women TV. So stay where you are.